Hi everyone, welcome to 6.5 on the road from Las Vegas. This is Dell Technologies World 2024, the AI edition. I'm Lisa Martin here with Dave Nicholson. Dave, we've been having some great conversations the last couple of days. Yes, it's always impressive and exciting to hear and see the depth and the breadth of Dell and its partner ecosystem. We're gonna be digging into that again with, with the guests that you and I know. Yes, we do. Please welcome Hannah Deuce to the program, Strategic Alliances Director at Rackspace. Great to see you again, Hannah. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, yeah, of course. I know. It's fun to be back. A couple of years, I guess. Yeah. So let's give us the overview. Dell and Rackspace have been partners since, I believe, 2016. Yeah. Quite a while now. Yes. Really focus on providing a very comprehensive set of solutions, cloud, managed hosting, IT services to customers. Give us the lay of the land. Here we are in 2024, or Dell's AI era, as they're talking about it. What has the evolution of the partnership been like? Oh gosh, okay, so Dell is probably one of our longest, longest partnerships that we have in the history of Rackspace. We started back in 1998. Fast forward through, Dell's been underpinning our private cloud offerings um, in our data centers, bare metal, uh, um, all of those things in the storage for, for many years. So strong partnership there, we've really, grown into partnering through verticals as well. So healthcare being a strength of ours where we'll manage um, full Dell stack uh, running Epic and then we manage the application all the way down through data center, everything. So that's been a tight alignment in recent years. Um, as we move into the AI era, as you mentioned, we recently launched um, our AI platform that leverages Dell and NVIDIA's validated designs for AI, um, and that is rolling out in a handful of phases. So what we started with was AI Anywhere, really bringing AI to the customer and wherever they might need it or want it, whether it's in their premise, whether it's on Colo, or whether it's in a Rackspace data center. So just kind of working through that and, and evolving as this industry changes with AI and the fast moving pace that it is, so. The pace has been crazy. I mean, what's ChatGPT 18 months old? And Dave was moderating a session yesterday where he shared a slide that showed that ChatGPT got to 1 million users in five days compared to like a Netflix, which was... 1,721 yes. days. So the speed and the acceleration, so. it's like breakneck speed. But you talked about AI Anywhere. That was only launched in January, yes. just a few months ago. Talk about how that is enabling organizations to really harness the power that AI and machine learning can deliver, but in a secure way, because security is incredibly important. Yes, and so that's what we're seeing a lot of. I, I just read an article the other day talking about, you know, repatriation and private cloud, and it's back, thanks AI, like driving a lot of that. I mean, you'll see it in the policies in your own companies of where, what tools you're allowed to use, where you put your own private data into some whether it's ChatGPT or Copilot or whatever it might be. And so what we've seen is that need, whether it's, whether it's sovereign services in certain countries, it needs to stay there and it needs a private environment, whether it's um, just due to compliance issues around patient data, things like that. So, so what Rackspace is enabling and, and providing the arms and legs around what Dell and NVIDIA have as validated designs is really that ability for a for a customer to consume this in a more, um, in, an, in an OPEX way, so they don't have to lay all the cash, who's got all that cash up front. Um, they can even, with Rackspace, they can even test it in our demos, or demo environments that we have. They need to test their data, see if this is really the business case, the route they wanna go, before they move on to production, and then able to consume it in a more friendly manner to the business, so they're not having to put out the millions that, that it requires. So hopefully that that helps. And then all yeah. of that obviously wrapped in um, inheritable security controls that Rackspace has come up with over the years and then implemented it into our AI platform as well. So we, we, have, we have a colleague, uh, Keith Townsend, actually was here, here a moment ago, uh, founder of CTO Advisor. And he has been uh, a champion of, of the hybrid cloud for, for, for quite a while. And it has been interesting to see. You mentioned repatriation. Um, as we enter this world of AI, people are becoming increasingly concerned about having their crown jewels reside in, frankly, hyperscale cloud providers. Is it fair to say that you sort of fit in that middle area where it's, hey, I don't wanna buy stuff on-prem. I want help managing it. I want validated designs. 
but I want it to be mine and private in the sense that it's not connected to everyone else. Is that something that you see growing in demand over time? Yes, we have definitely seen that. I mean, we started in that space before hosting was really a thing and, and kind of uh, helped build that space. And so now you kind of see these three locations, right? You've got, you can have it over here in Hyperscaler, and now you're, I'm hearing the word micro clouds emerge, you know, custom clouds, things like that. So you can have it in this more public centric area. You can have it in a hosted environment where I like to think of it as um, we're able to build a customer their cloud and so it's, it's truly a cloud model for them, um, but customized to their need. And that's something that Rackspace can, can specialize in and, and we do. And then you've got on-prem, which customer can do it too. But what we hear a lot of is I don't want to go, especially if they moved out of the data center, I don't want to go build a new data center. I don't want to go buy a data center. I don't want to handle all of that. So it kind of fits right in that sweet spot in the middle. Um, if they still have on-prem, then we can connect back into the on-prem as well. We can also connect into hyperscaler. So through our, um, our evolution, what's built up is kind of the secret sauce that we call Rack Connect Global. And it's the ability to really connect all of these clouds together, wherever they might be, and create a multi-cloud hybrid environment. And if customer wants, we can manage that whole thing or just a section of it. So, What do most customers want? When you talk about healthcare, for example, and life and death situations, uh, personal information. Are, are customers in healthcare, for example, where, where are they on that spectrum of on-prem, multi-cloud hybrid? Is there a generalization that you see by industry? I would say so. I mean, I would say in healthcare, uh, you know, if you think about hospitals, providers like that, you, you see a lot of on-prem still. Like they haven't, you know, there may be some applications, SaaS applications, things like that, that are in public cloud and you'll have some of that or they're looking at it. We hear a lot of we're evaluating this or looking at, and, and frankly, it's, it's Azure. Azure is kind of uh, prevalent in that space, it seems like right now, and a high interest there. And so, but a lot of it's still on-prem. And when you think about medical imaging or things like that, it's going to have to stay there. And all of the devices that are there, there's an edge play, a huge edge play that's going to stay private, you know. Um, but it's, it's localized there. So imaging's got to be there, but then you need all your data retention. So where are you going to put all that data for forever and ever, basically? Um, is that going to grow in a hyperscale cloud? Perhaps, and people are looking at that, and some are doing it. But I would say a large majority is still on-prem, and they're looking at ways to move that out. Yeah, it's interesting. I think that if um, usually our first, the first iteration of what we expect is going to happen when a sort of revolution is underway. We think that things are gonna consolidate, jobs are going away, we're all gonna be either working for Amazon or Walmart and that's it. And then somehow or another, a sort of new economy emerges around these things. Um, I was having a discussion with someone the other day about a high-speed rail system that went in between two cities in China. They thought it was gonna put a bunch of people out of work it created this incredible thriving economy around this new idea that you could now deliver things within an hour and a half that took 10 hours before. So at first glance, you might say, well, wait a minute, AI revolution means massive training clusters that only the hyperscalers can possibly produce. Therefore, everything on-prem, everything in a sort of mid-size MSP, provider of services like you would be under assault. But do you feel like that or do you see do you see the opportunity that's there? Yeah. Because it feels like there's opportunity. We're walking around here and it doesn't feel like everything is narrowing in only one direction. For example, the NVIDIA direction. It's not all going in just one place. Right. It's really kind of lift, the rising tide is lifting all ships. Do you feel that at Rackspace? Because you should. Yes. I'm trying to be encouraging. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. No. <laughs> Was I, there a question? I, I, <laughs> I just ask a question? I, I agree with you. Um, yeah. I mean, I feel like we're seeing a pivot in maybe where we're focusing things and trying to learn, like, where is the right opportunity? Where's our strengths? Where do yeah. we lend our strengths? Um, if, you, if you look at 
kind of what we're talking a lot about around AI is if we, if we take healthcare again, for example, and we think about our ability to offer, offer demo labs in this space to really incubate yeah. in some ways. So we have, this, we have a services framework, it's called FAIR, Foundry for AI by Rackspace, and it basically started, um, the reason that it was launched is what we saw a need for is customers need to know how to continue that journey. No, I'm supposed to do something, but what? And so then the process is ideate, help them ideate, build the business case, get into incubate. Where are they going to incubate? Where are they going to test this? And so then we can provide that and then industrialize. What from the incubation stage are we actually going to go make live, really see an ROI from? So absolutely agree with you. I mean, you see, you see these deals out in the news of like just gigantic hardware deals for, for whether it's GPU as a service offerings or LLM training models, you know, but the reality is, or what we're, what we're seeing more of is, um, well, that's come really fast and furious. Now you've got this, this inferencing game. Yes. And that's where the like ongoing, that's really where we want to be is inferencing, fine tuning, and helping keep that data safe and really help train it on, on the customer's specific data sets and getting the data right that goes into it. So. And this isn't Rackspace's first rodeo. No. I mean, you, <laughs> you, were, you were a bit at the front end of creating these cloud environments, call them private, hybrid cloud environments. Right in the sort of VMware, the dawn of the age of VMware context. So this seems to be a natural extension yeah. in the world yeah. of AI. You talked about the evolving customer journey and how things are evolving so quickly. I'd love to kind of understand, given that, how have customer conversations changed in terms of the level mm -hmm. of folks in organizations that are now really key to trying to figure out where do we place the data, what's the use case, how do we get it access to it quickly? Have you seen shifts in terms of the actual sales cycle? Ooh, actual sales cycle. It's still fairly lengthy, <laughs> usually. Um, I would say the conversation's shifting a little bit as people are now starting to wrap their heads more around what does this maybe mean. Yeah. One thing that's been common, and, and now we're just seeing it more pointedly, is uh, building that business case. Because you gotta have, you gotta have the ROI around whatever you're gonna go invest in, and so, really helping them build out. Okay, what's the focus area? How do we build on one, get it to a place that it's running, and then we can go back and because you can come up with use cases. That, I feel like that's where we started. Was what are all the use cases? And our use case library went to like 600 in like no time. You know, we were now it's way above that, and so you can come up with the use cases, but it's building the business value yeah. around that that makes it make sense. And then you've got a resource constraint, always. Yep. So where are those resources gonna come from? Can you hire for them fast enough? Are they in the right place? And so that's that's one of longstanding Rackspace's value props is the ability to provide resources in an area where we have some ex expertise to an organization so they don't have to fully staff for all of that out of the gate. But you're spot on with the proliferation of use cases, which can just go on and on. Yeah. Is the business value right. is paramount for organizations to understand the mm -hmm. impact, the ROI, the TCO. What are when you look at, at the horizon? We talked about how long Dell and Rackspace have been partners. What do you see on that frontier? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, so I see a lot more vertical solutions coming into play. So Rackspace is great at the horizontal. I mean that we can kind of do anything. <laughs> and so like when you go across that, but the verticalization helps us focus and really speak to um, business outcomes specific to that, that area. Um, so I think tighter alignment there and how we're going to market, how we're speaking to our customers aligned in verticals and specific challenges there. I think um, you'll continue to see more around AI as we launch more offerings. So we have about three others on the roadmap that are shortly, there'll be more word about those. Um, so that will definitely be a focus. I think this open, open ecosystem, um, Rackspace is about customer choice. We want to offer, offer our customers choice, meet them where they're at. I think that aligns well with what Dell's saying as, as well. But um, we have a longstanding history in OpenStack. And so building around um, kind of the resurgence of some of that and interest in that um, 
Yeah, so I think those are a few, few different, you know, product-y kind of areas that will go, and then the outcomes around targeted verticals and perhaps ISVs, things like that. We'll keep our eye on verticalization. We'll keep our eye on from what's coming out from an AI perspective and those business outcomes that you guys are enabling customers to achieve. Hannah, thank you so much yes. for spending some time with us on 6.5 on the road. Awesome. Thank you all so much. Our pleasure Enjoyed to have it. you. Good to see you. Yeah, you too. For Hannah Deuce, Dave Nicholson, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching 6.5 on the road from Las Vegas covering Dell Technologies World 2024. Dave and I will be right back, joined by a couple of guests in just a moment.